everybody. Welcome to the Quivercast. You go left, I go right. Man, this wig is out of sight. Go surfing. Go surfing. Go and surfing with friends. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Quivercast. We are very excited today. We have Jeannie Chesser. How are you, Jeannie? I'm doing great, and I hope you're doing great, too. I am. Thank you. First thing, did you surf today? I did not, you know, because there's a contest happening on the weekend, so there's all these uh, little rippers, little rippers, <laughs> big rippers, you know, they're all out there practicing, and although I love watching them surf, and I love uh, surfing in a spot that's you know, where the surfers are actually, they know what they're doing yes. as opposed to some other beginner spots. So I would have had to go to Waikiki or somewhere and it, it's just too crowded. There's a swell and it's beautiful, but you know what I did this morning? I went to the laundromat and did my laundry and, there you, uh, go. you know, I bit the bullet, but I'm like, you know, whatever I can surf another day. It'll be fine. Errands have to get done even if we want to or don't want to. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I let things pile up until the very last minute. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I don't do it today, if I don't get up at 530 and go do this today, I am not going to do it for another week. So I have to do it. I have yeah. To get it done. Let's start way back in the beginning. So you started surfing in Florida. And how old were you? I was 14 when I first started surfing at um, South Beach, Miami Beach. Okay. How'd you get into it? Who introduced you to it? My best friend, one of my girlfriends, my, well, my one best friend, Annie, she taught me how to skateboard and we would go surfing together. And she was just a really great influence on me. Um, and I hope that I was a good influence on her. But <laughs> yeah, she was great. It'd be great because sometimes there'd be only me and her out in the water. Wow. And, yeah. Well, I mean, they called us the Ripple Riders at, at South Beach. We were called the Ripple Riders because there's hardly any waves there, right? Until mm -hmm. there's a hurricane or something. Okay. Yeah. Or we would go down to a couple other spots, uh, 21st Street, 5th Street, right there at South Beach. That was our stomping ground. And, and yeah, we were, I, I believe that we were the only girls in our school, in our high school, that surfed. Wow. Which, of course, made the odds great, you know? Okay. So I I liked that part. Yeah. Yeah, cool. it was great. Yeah. Yeah, but, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. So how far back yeah. from the beach were you? Like, where'd you grow up? Like, real close to the ocean? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was more inland. Okay. I would have to go over the, over the causeway to go to the beach and she lived a little more close. She lived on the other side of the causeway. So she was on Biscayne Bay. You know, we'd, we'd just hook up and go together and her dad would take us down sometimes or my parents would drop us off sometimes. And, you know, those were in the days where you could go to the beach all day long. You just get a tuna sandwich and you're there all day. And then your parents come and they pick us up and, you know, it was, it was a great time. It was a great time to be in Miami. I loved it. It was it was just so pure. Yeah, and always warm, right? Miami's nice. Oh yeah, I never realized how hot and humid it was yeah. until I came to Hawaii. I never ever, you know, you get used to it. Yeah, and I was born there, so right. I I knew I didn't have anything different, and I didn't know that that the water is more beautiful and clear like it is here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, although Miami has pretty clear clear water most times but it's a very sandy bottom so you get that churn stuff yes yeah up at coco beach was way more murky and okay. that was a two-hour drive or i forget how far away it was it might have been a four-hour drive yeah i think it's a you little know bit. Yeah. i can't remember a lot of things a lot of things are as murky as the water <laughs> in my mind so, you know, just bear with me. I don't remember certain dates, but I do remember certain, you know, things that have happened. And, you know, I'll, tr I'll try to focus on those things. But yeah. still talking about Florida, did you know mm -hmm. at this time when you're totally you and her name's Annie? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that your life would be completely based around surfing at that point as um, a young teenager? Yeah, I Kind of. In our high school, we actually had this, we tried to make like a little club and it was called Cakey Law. Mm. And we made 
jacket. Oh, I did a presentation on Hawaii wow. in um, one of my classes. You know, I, I studied it mm-hmm. and did a little, you know, presentation. I think I brought some pineapple or something <laughs> for the for the class. That's you cool. know, yeah, it's so cool. you know, you do silly things when you're a kid. And awesome, and yeah. I I I really had my sights set on it even before. I saw surf movies and surf. I did see surf magazines. And of course, that's what kind of put the bug in me. Like, oh my gosh, I have to go there. 100%. Was surfing hard for you? Like, or did you pick it up very easily? I don't think it was that hard. My first surfboard weighed 35 pounds. Right. Yeah. And it had a, a great laminated, gigantic fin on it. And yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we were just going straight anyway. I don't think we yes. we did many turns. And there wasn't that much people, so you didn't really run over anybody. You know what I mean? So it was actually pretty good. I think I was kind of okay. We have some Super 8 millimeter films that I still have that I want to turn into digital someday. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. The next year, I think it was 65. Mm-hmm. I won a contest, a surf meet. There was, I think, there was maybe five girls in a, in our heat or mm-hmm. whatever. Our final, we just had a straight, straight final. final. Yeah, and it was actually it was hurricane surf. Ooh. So don't ask me how I did it. I think they just the the judges just liked me because I was cute. Of so course. they let me win. <laughs> they let me win. And the next year, I got third in a, a similar contest, but it was more like the state. Uh, it was more the, it involved the whole state. The first one was the Miami Beach uh, Big Kahuna contest. It was sponsored by a radio station. Mm. Yeah. And I, I have the trophy still somewhere. That's cool. Don't ask me where. Yeah. But you still have it. That's but, yeah. all that matters. You know, I guess that was the ego boost or something that I needed. Like, hey, I guess I am good at this. I can do this. And I loved skateboarding too when we had the wooden wheels and, my skateboard name was Goofy Foot because I'm a Goofy Foot. <laughs> right. So we had wooden wheels and then we had the steel, you know, I think they were made of stainless steel. Yeah, the something. metal ones. The metal wheels. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Nothing compared to today's standards, but yeah, it was probably very hard to skateboard oh, yeah. like that. Well, we would go bomb the uh, parking lots, you know, where had the... <laughs> No. And I never really got hurt skateboarding until I did it when I was in my 60s. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. So, uh, no, it was it was great. I, I mean, we probably got road rash every once in a while, but it was uh-huh. nothing that kept us out of the water. Right. So, yeah, it was great. And how many other surfers were around? I mean, I know there's a lot less people then surfing. Yeah. But was there it were common? a lot less people. You know, I can't even, it wasn't that crowded i mean and there would be people that actually went to california and would get uh i actually got to order harbor surfboard yeah and, and a Harbor. being surf surfboard and nice i have an old receipt that said that it cost a hundred bucks which was probably a lot of money back then and that was a lot of money because i think gas was like 20 cents a right. gallon back then yeah yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of money, but you know, and my parents didn't have a lot of money. My dad worked really hard. Mm. My my parents were blue collar. For some reason, they always would find money for things like that. You know that that kept me and my brother happy. So. Did your brother surf yeah. too? No, he did not. No. He was more like an honor student. He was a total opposite of me. He was an honor <laughs> student. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, and he graduated when he was 16, and he wow. got into, yeah, tell me about it. He skipped a grade. This is when you could skip a grade, and I barely made my math class, you know, stuff like that. And You wanted to once surf. I, yeah, once I started surfing, that was it. Yeah. I, first, I wanted to be a cheerleader. Then I kind of hurt myself going over those, what do they call those those things where you jump over the – a saddle horse or some type of horse thing. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't know what it is. It's a gymnast. Gymnast. I was going to say, I'm no gymnast. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. And neither was I, but I had, I did it in my physical education class and I kind of hurt my leg, So I couldn't be a cheerleader, but I sure as hell could surf still. Yeah. So that was my focus. And all the boys were just so cute. I couldn't help myself. All tan and yeah. blonde. For the most oh my part. God. They were just adorable. Right they were on. adorable. 
So you do this whole Florida thing and you start progressing in your surfing. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, you know, here's what happened. Let's see. I was 17 when I graduated. Mm -hmm. I got married at 18. Wow. I became a mother at 19. I quit surfing for two years when I got pregnant because in those days, you don't walk around with your belly sticking out. Uh -huh. And plus, I was so tiny and I looked really young. And so everybody thought, oh, my God. Ooh. <laughs> so, okay. you know, wow. Yeah. And so I was a mother at 19 and then I was widowed at age 22. Yeah. So that's when I moved to Cocoa Beach and I got more, you know, I thought, well, hell, I'm going to go surfing. I'm going surfing now, yeah. you know, and I took Todd with me. He was three years old, mm -hmm. just turned three or something. And yeah, we were a team. We lived up at 550 South Atlantic Avenue, me and Todd, and we could walk right across the street to the beach. And it was so empty that we would have to walk down sometimes when we would see somebody in the water. Well, he was a baby, so I would, yeah. I could leave him on the beach because you're like right there. You're 10 mm -hmm. feet away because yeah. the waves don't break so far out. Yeah, you could walk down and surf with somebody. And, you know, it was just a great time. And, and I never realized that Kelly Slater grew up right around the corner from us. Wow. I didn't realize that until... He had heard me talk at Todd's funeral, and he said, hey, I lived right around the corner from you guys. But, of course, he was, by the time that I left there to go to Hawaii, he, I think he was just being born or something. Right, yeah. So we, our timing was off because he was a little bit younger than Todd. So, yeah. Still a coincidence, it, it though. Was, it was it's, amazing. Yeah, I know. It's a small it was, world. And it, for him, yeah, to come and tell me that, like, oh, my God, I lived right around the corner from you guys. So sticking with Florida just for a moment. Mm -hmm. the water's kind of warm. You, you, you're loving this yep. beach lifestyle and it's just you a Todd at this point. So you decided to pick up and move over to Hawaii. Yeah, because I wanted to get away because I couldn't take it that, you know, my husband had passed away. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. And there was just so much pressure on me oh, okay. with, with Todd family stuff. I mean, my parents were totally cool, but it was kind of like a thing where I f was feeling pressured that they didn't think I was going to be a good mother and blah, blah, mm. blah. How can you take this baby away from us and blah, blah, blah. So I just told them, hey, I'm, I'm going, to, first I'm going to California and then I'm probably going to end up in Hawaii. And that's when there was no cell phones, no, you know, I would stop along the way when I was driving. Yeah, you drove across country, huh? Yeah, me and Todd drove across country. So gnarly. It was it was awesome. Oh, was it awesome? I mean, I drove every day, all day, you know, like however long until I got tired. And then we would see a motel and stay there overnight and drive again. Mm -hmm. It was great. I mean, I wouldn't do it today. Mm -hmm. People drive like shit now. <laughs> You know, it was a different crazy. time. It was a different time. Oh my God. People were, were, you know, we knew what we were doing back then. And my dad was a former, what do you call, um, hot, rod, hot rod racer. Okay. You know, he, he would race, um, hot rods. Yeah. Like drag and racing so, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And before Daytona, uh, was like invented, but they would, they would race on the beach Wow. Stock car racing. That's oh, the word go. that I'm trying to find. Okay. Stock cars. All right. So, you know, I learned how to drive when I was eight. I couldn't reach the pedals, but he, you know, I got, I learned how to drive and I'm the really good driver now. And my mom was a great driver. She drove till she was like 93, never had an accident, never had a ticket. Wow. Yeah. But That's my dad had cool. tickets and stuff. Because <laughs> yeah, he was, he had the pedal yeah. to the metal. Yes, he did. And, but I knew what I was doing and I trusted other drivers that they knew what they're doing too. And it was, it was a great time to be on the road. It was, it wasn't bad at all. I, not like now. I just really, I think about it and I go, how the hell did I do that by myself with, with this baby? Did you stop along the way and like sightsee or was it just like, I'm going to California? No. It was more like we'd stay in the hotel, eat somewhere, okay, or grab food, get gas, keep going. Okay. No, I my destination was California. So where'd you show up in California? I stayed at a Sunset Beach Motel or okay. hotel or something. Yeah, I'm familiar with. I that don't is. even know where that is now, <laughs> <laughs> and I only know the main 
beaches in California, you know, Malibu, right. Huntington, yeah. blah, 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 all the main things. But we kind of went towards Long Beach. I wanted to ship the car over. Oh, smart. You know, I'm I'm telling you, I can't do that kind of stuff t- today. <laughs> I, I, it's too I wouldn't complicated. Want to do it. Oh, heck yeah! Uh, how do I? How did I do that? I don't know. I guess I was. You're bit young more and ambitious. Oh yeah, young and stupid, and just take chances. What the hell? <laughs> you know what? It worked out though, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So how long did you stay in California? Um, probably just about a week. Because oh, okay. Todd was on the beach at Huntington, and we we're making those little sand castles, those really cool ones where you just take the sand and you drip it. Yes, yes. So much fun. I loved the beaches, but the water was so cold, oh. and Todd had purple lips, <laughs> and I thought, we can't stay here. It's just too cold. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I totally agree yeah. with you, actually. So, yeah. yeah. So, you it's so all of a sudden on to Hawaii. Yeah. Did you fly over and then ship the car over? Yeah. Or? Okay. I shipped the car over and flew over, but I remember going Braniff Airlines when I had to go back to Miami every once in a while. Mm-hmm. No lines. You could just call and make it a, you know, you make your reservation whenever and get on the plane. You didn't have to. You know, all the wait. TSA and all that to like today. No, there's nothing. Right. Simple. I think things were simpler back then. Oh, it was so simple. Everyone was, was trustworthy. Wonderful. It seems like. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Maybe it's not true. Nothing stolen. You leave your car unlocked. You leave your door unlocked. Not like now. No, not at all. So you get to Hawaii. Do you have any friends Mm -hmm. or anything there? I had one friend that I knew from Miami, Larry Mm -hmm. Salem. Okay. He was one of the the outstanding surfers in uh, South Beach, and I knew him. And he showed me where Ala Moana is and stuff like that. But. Mm -hmm. We didn't really like hook up or anything. We were just friends and he just showed me stuff. And then I did have a boyfriend that came from Merritt Island in Florida and he came later okay. and, and met me there. All right. Yeah. One thing I do want to talk about real quick is mm-hmm. during this transition, especially during this time, uh, surfboards are changing. So you started off in a longboard. Do you find yeah. yourself riding a shorter and shorter board or what, how did it go? As soon as the shortboard revolution came i mean and that was the time when sh- shortboards were coming out like yes. in what what year the early early 70s yes i didn't even bring a board with me mm-hmm. i just got a board when i came i i think my first board that i got was from surf line hawaii oh and it was like a, a six six two or something like that single fin though glass on right because we didn't have boxes or stuff well long boards might have but yeah. Um, and I have a picture of it. Todd and I had a boat in 73 in the harbor at Ala Moana uh, Harbor. Mm-hmm. I have a picture of the board on my boat. Wow. With with the single fin and it was green and <laughs> okay, funky shape. Did it work? Oh, yeah. Well, it worked then. Okay. You know, and then <laughs> I also still have my original IPA Sting. Oh, wow. From 1973 or 74. I still have it. Wow. And it had a box single fin, but I tried to take that out not too long ago. My friend tells me, go, go, go. And I almost killed him because the board went straight and I went, <laughs> you know, it was so different. Yes. It's just the shape was just crazy. I needed something a little wider, but oh, okay. I'm glad I kept it. Of course. I mean, yeah. that, that is a classic board right there, 100%. Yep. I'm keeping it. Yeah, of course. You need to keep that thing. Mm-hmm. So, so you you go through this revolution. You're in that period. So you move to Hawaii, no board. You get a couple boards. And is your surfing better on a short board than a long board? Or how, how do you feel like I would, your surfing level I would think is? so. Yeah? I would think so. Yeah. And uh, I don't. I can't ride a long board now. My longest board <laughs> is 6'7". I never, I, could, funny, I can't, right? I borrowed a seven, two one time because there was this contest in, at Queens in Waikiki. It was a father son thing. I didn't have a father. They let me be the, the father in the contest. Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, with Aaron Napoleon, John Shimaoka, Kaipo Guerrero oh. and me and all their, and their fathers. <laughs> I hope I didn't miss anyone. I think, I think that was it. And, and yeah, and 
Yeah. And so I had to borrow a 7-2, like a fun board thing, yeah. because I did not have anything close to a long board. They let me use that little board. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. So how'd you guys do in that event? And how fun was that? It sounds like a lot of fun. I think we got fourth. Okay. Out of uh, out of that lineup, I'm oh, pretty dude. sure we got fourth. Yeah. And um, I do super have, respectable lineup. I have a yeah, I have a um a plaque, a trophy of it some, somewhere in my house. <laughs> how many trophies <laughs> and, and plaques do you have in your house? I have a lot, and oh, I have a like bunch it. of Todd stuff and Todd's um, trophies, and everybody's been so good to me. They find these boards of pods mm -hmm. you know it's just written on a stringer for todd chesser and kelly just brought me one that he got that was a locomotion board wow. and i think that was about i'm looking at it right now it's got glass on fins i think it's about maybe a six two or six one something like that because that was probably the most popular size back then mm -hmm. they didn't go sh too short no but yeah he brought it for me from California or wherever he got it. And he called me and said, Hey, I got, I got something for you. I come up to the North shore. Yeah. He presented it to me and I was pretty stoked. And then another guy from California. I mean, these people are incredible. They bring me these boards. Another guy, Alex, Alex Hart, he brought me this great, more like a, a bigger wave board. I think that one's might be seven, two. I see the nose of that one. Uh, from here okay. and it's also glass ons and it was um, uh, shaped by carl shopper the locomotion one was shaped by pat rossin wow and i also have a bunch of todd's guns from hawaiian island creations wow so That's yeah so eric cool. arakawa boards from hawaiian island creations so i have a i have a bunch of his boards so people just call you and say, I found one of uh, Todd's boards. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I just got, got a call from this other guy, uh, not a call, but an email mm -hmm. from this other person in California who said, Hey, I came across this board and he took a picture of it. It was one that I had airbrushed because a lot of times I'll sign my name on it. Oh, okay. And it was a local motion board shaped by Steve Wilson. And he said, I do remember the board and the airbrush, but I told him, he said he offered to bring it to me. From California. Super nice. He said, next next time I come, I, I'm going to bring that board. And I said, well, you know, I'm not emotionally attached to it. It wasn't made for me or for Todd. So, But I did airbrush it. And I think it would be nice if you wanted to bring it. And I can put it in the shop at Local Motion because it's kind of a classic, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So he's going to do that. And, yeah, everybody's just so sweet and kind and thoughtful. I think the surf world looks out for each other in some ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe there's not the always. Dark but... side and there's the <laughs> yes, bright I was side. Say, there's the dark side too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But I think that's there's light and dark in everything. Oh yeah. It's a balance. Yeah, of course. All right. So you moved to Hawaii, you and Todd. And mm -hmm. what are your plans? Like are you gonna get a job or like what do you plan on doing? Or what happens? My parents were so you know, I I, I always had a good work ethic. Mm-hmm. I can sew, I can make things, I can paint, I can make jewelry, I can rig stuff up and, you know, invent things and stuff like that. And so I would paint boards for my friends and, mm -hmm. or, you know, and so other people would see, oh, I want that on my board. Or, oh, can you paint my board? And so that's how I got into airbrushing. Wow. Yes, just word of mouth. I oh. didn't go and, hey, man, can I come paint here? No. Okay. I didn't ask for it. They made me do it. You weren't looking for that job, but it just it found you. No. Kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It was, an, it was a natural fit? Yeah, because I am I loved art, and right. I liked surfboards, and I liked people. And yeah. so m my friend Al Dove, who worked with Ben Ipa and – back in the day with George Downing mm. when they had the first boards that were made there at mm -hmm. their factory at, at Surfline. Mm -hmm. I worked with Al Dove. He showed me, he was so sweet. He just, he showed me how to use the airbrush, but I, I took those tips and I worked at it on my own, mm, okay. but with his tutelage or he, he was my mentor. He 
couldn't make it here in Hawaii, he had to move to California. And the last I heard, he was painting collectible race cars for, for that actor, Tim Allen. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I think he did really well, but I also have heard that he's having, he always had PTSD because that was a time of, you know, the Vietnam War and stuff. Okay. And I heard that he has PTSD kind of bad and that would he physically, he wasn't doing too well either. So mm. I'm, I'm hoping maybe someone hears this and reaches out to him because he's such a amazing artist. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, I can I miss I miss that where people are you know, normal humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mhm. Yeah. So this airbrushing finds you and you and do you love being in the surf industry? Are you are you enjoying it or, are you, or what are your thoughts? I didn't mind it. Here's another thing when airbrushing was slow or whatever in the 80s it was great. Everybody got their board painted in the 80s. I bet, yes. And that was all of the color and all of that and i was actually making money okay you know and i always rented i, I could never afford to buy a house so i always rented mm -hmm. which didn't bother me because sort of my hippie upbringing was like we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow you don't I need know. a house okay i wish i had didn't have that mindset i wish i had put down roots because i lived at my previous house for 39 years and then they sold it that's hard. So that's right. Oh my God. Yeah. Terrible. That's where Todd grew up. And I had the marks on the wall of his height, you know? Yeah. And no, all of his, uh, you know, it was awful. Yeah. So anyway, but back to our airbrushing story. Yeah. In the eighties, it was great. I worked all over this Island. I worked in Nanakuli. I worked in Waimanalo at a former horse stable. Oh. Which they made into, yeah, it's that like was just straight day. up surfboards. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah. yeah. They made little rooms, like, you know, here's the sanding Smart. room, here's the shaping room, here's the glassing room. Yeah. And in Nanakuli, I worked at a former chicken coop, mm. okay. which was not very pleasant because there was a black top where you parked your car. And then when you walked on it, you thought, oh, it's black. No, it was flies. Oh. <laughs> so that was kind of gnarly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I worked up Pupakea Heights. Though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my. Yeah. It was because it would go like a cartoon, you know, <sighs> like they would move when you walked. Yeah, yeah. It was a cartoon. It was, it was, you know, hilarious. Right. And, and I worked up Pupakea Heights where I didn't know where the hell I was. And all you could hear was the, the wind blowing through the pine trees, which was lovely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but I was working in a sanding room, and it was very dusty, and I would carry all my guns with my paints and stuff. Okay. You know, I had a truck, and I would put it in the back there and carry everything, all my equipment with me, and I also worked up at Fred Patachia's dad's place. Mm, okay. He was in Pupukea, but he was in a, a little bit more, oh, their yard was, gosh, it was beautiful. It was like a a giant driveway with the beautiful green grass. And I worked in a um, container. He had a container on the property. Yep. Okay. That and it sense. would get a little hot in there, oh, but I, I worked there for a, for a while. I also worked in Kailua. I worked at Nash surfboards. I worked, gosh, we're there. I don't want to miss anybody that I, that I worked at. Yeah. I worked all over the Island, worked in Wailua for a, a long time at shopper surfboards. And I also worked at, HIC, locomotion, then back to HIC. Now I'm getting ready to retire. I'm so excited about it. Oh, I bet. Retirement's got to be great. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I don't have benefits. I'm self-employed. I do get Social Security, which pays my rent, which is good. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you paid into that. Yeah. I want to do my art. I want to do my art, and I want to do artsy-fartsy stuff keep talking about the art and the airbrushing. Where do you mm -hmm. get your inspiration for the airbrush you're going to do on a board? Do people request well, kind of a thing what they want, or do you kind of just get go with it? With well, uh, uh, most of them are custom orders. Okay. Eric Awakawa and Glenn Minomi, I was very good with drawing out the exact 
drawing, you know, the thing that I have to copy okay. and the colors and stuff. Wow. Which I love because sometimes it'd be like, okay, I don't care. Just do whatever. And I go, well, you're going to get pink and purple polka dots <laughs> if you don't give me an idea. <laughs> okay. Fair. You know, That's for real. Fair. I go, well, you're going to get the, the Baskin Robbins uh, <laughs> design. Okay. So, yeah, then they go, oh, no, I want blue, you know, whatever, bro. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you dealing with, like, the people buying the board that are you airbrushing for, or are you just dealing mm, with the shapers only? No. Usually just the shapers. My friends will bring me stuff, you know, to, to paint that they deal with the shaper, and then they bring it to me. Okay. And currently, before next week, before I retire, I'm currently working at three different factories, and they're all on Sand Island. Usually, I don't have to deal with the customer. In fact, I've had to tell people, I don't deal with the customer unless I know them. I will deal with them if I know them. You know, I'm not going to call the customer. Oh, did you like this? You know, whatever. <laughs> but, come on. You know, so I don't deal with the customer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a delicate piece of material you're working off. Are you super careful with, like, not messing with the rails or, you know, do you understand what I'm the question? How does that I work? I am so good. I can say that because I've been doing it for over uh, 52 yes. freaking years. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like I know how to handle the board. I know how to tape it off. And there's some, oh, my gosh, I have seen some really bad shapes. And I, I'm going, how well, am I supposed to follow oh. that rail and not go like all wiggly? You know what I mean? Oh, the yeah. thing is just so off. And I, sometimes I would call people into the room. They go, "Hey, come check this out, man! This is crazy!" And we'd all have a good laugh. Okay. And then one time, this guy came back. I mean, he, he, two boards. He got two boards uh-huh. from. I'm not going to mention the shaper. Yeah, please. But he <laughs> you can't, he's no. more know. famous now than he was back then. And so he comes back and he goes, "Oh my God! Thank you guys so much. My boards came out so good, and they're rip. I, I they're so they're the best boards I ever had." Mm-hmm. So, you know, it does. Sometimes it doesn't matter. You know. Okay. It's the. It's sometimes it's not the arrow. It's the Indian. Uh huh. But most 100%. times it is the arrow. But yeah, I was I was shocked because that was one of the boards I brought my friends in to take a look at. Good, good laugh. And he came back, and he was so stoked. Like, just thank you guys. Oh my gosh, because people sometimes they don't come back and give us feedback. Of course, you yeah. Know, they just, you know, they, you never see them again, on. which is great. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going surfing. Yeah, but this this guy actually came back, and I'll never forget it. It was it was very cute. So you are dealing with thousands, if not tens of thousands, or how many boards you've worked on? Mm-hmm. First off, you just said you've seen some shapes where it's like, oh my goodness, that's not the yeah. best shape, right? Has that helped your surfing? It helped you pick out the equipment that you ride. No, because I trusted my shapers. Okay. Okay, let's say Pat Rawson always made me good boards. Yeah. Eric Arakawa, I got his boards for, gosh, 35 years. And all I would say, make me a maybe make me a 5'8", make me a this, make me a that. Always perfect. Well, these guys are you know? the best in the world. Yeah. <laughs> So you, mean, you're but, getting good shapers to work with. So that's, that's good. Yeah. But then again, other people ask me, Oh, I, w- I want to make you a board. And they go, I don't know what I want. I mean, you <sighs> just make it. <laughs> I, I can't, yeah. You know, I, Let yeah, the shaper... I don't know the specs, you know, I just tell them about how big and I like the rails this way, but I, you know, all that technical stuff, that's not me. Okay. That's them. That's the shaper. And they, they get so into it. I just not, I'm like, oh, that looks good and it feels good. I'll take it. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. All these years, is that your sole job? Your sole living is just airbrushing oh, boards? No. Okay. Mm-mm. So you have no, to find I've jobs had... in between? Oh, yeah. Because, well, like I say, the 80s were really good. Yeah. 90s stood black and white, right? Right. Because, okay, I bought a truck in 89 because I was working at two places. I was working at Campbell Industrial Park and I was also working at Nash in Kailua. And I was probably working somewhere else. I don't know. But I was doing really well. And then um, I bought a brand new truck. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I did that, that was in 89. And then in 91, the Gulf War happened and had all of that, um, well, what they call now supply chain things and you know it was it was 
limited supplies and stuff like that. And so, wow. but I've always had other jobs. Like I said, my, my parents put a good work ethic into me and I was, I've been a waitress. I've been a sandwich delivery girl. I've been a pool attendant at Ilikai Hotel. I worked at Holly Kalani Hotel as a waitress. I was a contest judge for amateurs and professionals and also commentator for professional events and I got my massage license because I thought that I was going to go to Tavarua and massage people. Oh, okay. But then I thought, oh no, I'm going to be too tired if I'm massaging. I want to just surf. Right. <laughs> so, you know, so that kind of went, and that was another time when, right when I got my license, I forget what what year it was, the one where it had 9-11. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then nobody wanted, mas- nobody could afford massages. Nobody wanted massages. Right. And then now everybody's doing massage, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's too hard. for I couldn't do it now. Yeah. So I've always worked, always worked. And the whole time you're living on Oahu? Yeah. Okay. Well, you said you stayed in the same house for 39 years. Where was that house at? It was kind of in this neighborhood that I'm back in. It's kind of by the back slopes of Diamond Head. Oh, okay. In Kaimuki area, which is a great area. It's it's neighborhood style you know, old homes. Uh, in fact, this home that I live in right now, I'm renting the upstairs part, and it's a 150-year-old house. Wow. That's yeah, old. and I have a great view of Coco Head and the bay out there. Nice. But it's not perfect. I mean, it's, you know, it's old. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, there's something, there's would, something cool about that, yeah. though. That, that seems yeah, cool. it is. I like the architecture, you know, I like older yeah. stuff, but it would be nice to have air conditioning or a washer dryer or a covered parking for my car. That would be nice, but I don't have that. So you're in Hawaii now, along with airbrushing mm-hmm. and, and being around all these surfer shapers, some of the best in the world, mm-hmm. you and Todd are doing a lot of contests together too, right? Yes. Yes. I was thinking of that because I was trying to, you know, I'm like I told you earlier, I'm not real good at remembering dates and stuff. But Yeah. Yeah. No but, need for dates. Yeah. Yeah. Todd and I would go to the contest together because he was in the boys in the Minihuni and I was in the girls. Or the, at one point they called us females because they didn't know whether to call us girls or women. Yeah. Big age bracket probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Some are because, girls and yeah. some are ladies. That's w- right. And I think they should do that now. I don't think they should call them all women. They're not all women. They're, They're still girls, some of them. I would so, agree with you. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So at one point, Todd and I both won the state championships. That's so cool. Yeah. And wow. we were in the newspaper on the like the front page of the sports and our pictures and stuff. It was great. Yeah. Stuff yeah. like that is freaking am- I mean, stuff like that is amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> were you surfing contests because you enjoyed it or were you surfing it because Todd was surfing it? What was your inspiration? What happened was my best friend I met down at Makaha. Mm-hmm. I was taking pictures. I had an 800 millimeter lens that I bought from Larry Pope in, in Florida and I brought it with me and I had a nice camera and I liked taking photos and I took surfing pictures. Well, if you saw them now, you go, what the heck is that? It's so fuzzy. But it was such a good thing because it got me out there when the waves were too big or whatever. And mm-hmm. so I met Rel son, was one of the first, you know, girls yes. that I met here. Yeah. And she and I just hit it off right away. And she became my best friend. And she encouraged me to enter contests. She said, oh, you're good. You can do it. Oh, yes. She's so, you know, she's just such a bright light. Everything she could find something good about anybody wow okay but if you crossed her watch out let's put it that way fair that's but, fair though yeah I like yes that. you know we don't put up with that kind of crap no bs no no none of that <laughs> so she was just so inspirational to me and she would make fun of me because every time she would see me paddling towards the horizon, she'd go, Oh, the sets are coming. <laughs> she'd know that I was just hell all the way. And she's like, Oh, the sets are coming. Okay. All right. She was very encouraging. And I, and I did win a lot of amateur contests a lot. Mm-hmm. I loved it. That was fun. Was it fun because you're just out in the water surfing, making friends with these other ladies or women or, or girls or was it fun because you're a competitive person? 
or both? I, I think I'm I'm competitive. I think I'm more competitive. Okay. I think it's more that I, you know, I don't. <laughs> It wasn't, I don't want to reveal too too much about my personality, but um, okay, fair enough. Fair. Yeah, okay. yeah. Let's just say I, I I enjoyed competition, but I did make a lot of good friends. Of course, you know, very very good friends, and I could tolerate most of them. But you know, it's, well, it's competition. You it, know, you can't you're be... you're there to beat somebody. Yeah, I think. And then, but one time I felt so bad because one time at a Kiwalos contest, and here I am in my. I was probably in my forties, I think, okay. and I'm surfing with these girls that are, they're talk, they're out there in the heat talking about their school, you know, like, oh, my teacher is many me, and I, that's when I started feeling bad, like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be doing this anymore, <laughs> but I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, but and once I would again, beat them, so it all worked. Some people surf contests just to be a, in, you know, in the environment. It, you know, you're making, yeah. you know and what I'm saying? With a little bit of people and, you know, all of that, that part is really good too, because, you know, the water is cleared and you only That's have another good point. people. With you. Yeah. You yes. have four or five other women out there and you get to catch more ways. Good yeah, ways a lot of exactly. times. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. But some, some people just don't care if they make a heat. They just want to hang out the, for the day. And that's cool. No, I, I no, no. You were, you, were, <laughs> you want to advance. I'm <laughs> there for a purpose. That's right. I love that. Unless it's like, uh, you know, and plus, I mean, looking at all the boys and yeah, I'm, I'm never going to get over that part. I'm, I'm boy crazy. I can't help it. <laughs> I love your honesty. That's pretty good. No, I can't help it. I mean, I like a good looking guy. There just like go. guys like good looking girls. I mean, 100%. hey, I'm just like that. I'm terrible. I'm, Yeah. What's Todd's thoughts on competition? Is he loving beating people too? No, he did not like competing, but he did it. I told him at one point he was kind of not doing well in school. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and I actually, they wanted me to come talk to the teacher or something. And I'm like, and I was nervous. I go, oh, Todd, I can't go talk to the teacher. What are you doing? Like, no. So I told him, you better do better in school. And if you don't graduate, you are not going on the tour. You're not going to, you know, I'm not going to let you go on the tour if you don't graduate. Mm -hmm. And you better learn how to work with photographers or go get a job pumping gas. And that's when we could pump gas back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of, you know, he reluctantly did it. I don't think he, he enjoyed it that much. In fact, you know, if he had his way, he would have not had to enter. But to, to and you have to enter kind of to get sponsors and stuff, yeah, you yeah. know, and free stuff and free boards. And people have to see you and they want you to ride their clothing and their wetsuits and all of that. So you kind of have to play that game. The business side of it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But just don't get too caught up in it. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. During this period, too, as Todd's growing up and he's a teenager, a young man, becoming mm -hmm. a young man. Mm -hmm. There's other surfers, other, his friends. Who is he hanging out with, and who are some of the people that you were surfing with? Were you surfing alongside Todd and always? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes okay. we would even go out some Friday nights to the Hard Rock together. Oh wow! When he was able, you know, the drinking age was 18 at one point, and he, <laughs> we had a huge party of all his friends and stuff from school at our house, and the neighbor called the cops and everything, and. <laughs> Uh, and the girls bought him a stripper, but it wasn't a nasty stripper. She was more like just in her underwear. You know, she came dressed as a cop. <laughs> and, That's great. and she said, hey, we're hearing a lot of noise here. And then, you know, he was sitting down on them. They made him sit in the chair. And I have pictures of this, too, some, somewhere. And, yeah, um, yeah. And then she stripped to her underwear. And it was a wild. I mean, for that age, you know, 18. And I know at the house, that was the house that I lived at for a million years. Yeah. There were finger streaks from Kaipo Guerrero standing on a trunk of mine and jumping up on the ceiling, like <laughs> scraping the ceiling with his hand. I remember seeing that stain there forever. Oh, no. That's funny. Yes. Yeah. So that you guys have, were having a good time. Oh, yeah. Right. So, so yeah. And, and I got to mention, Kaipo was one of Todd's good friends. Kaipo would come over and talk to me. He was very articulate 
and Todd would get all mad, like, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute. And then his other friends, Kalohi Bloomfield was one of his good friends. We would, yeah. that's where we started surfing up on the North shore with Kalohi and uh, Ross Williams, who I think was 11 years old. Wow. Just kids. Um, yeah. Maddie Liu, Jason Magalinas, they were the younger group. And then Shane Dorian came to our house when he was about 12 or 13 and stayed at our house because he was there for a contest. And then, then when Todd um, was more up on the North Shore and stayed at what we call the Hill House because mm -hmm. their last name was Hill yeah. with Raquel Hill's family, that's when Brock Little was there. And Brock was a little older than Todd. But then the boys started coming there, you know, like Benji, Conan, gosh, those guys. Yeah. Pat O'Connell came from California. Um, she was like, oof. it was so, so many. It was, yeah, yeah, it was great. And Kelly would, Kelly eventually started coming and yeah. And oh, it was, it was the best time ever. Yeah. Best of times. It was for really sure. a great time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Todd is going out in bigger and bigger surf too. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And he would drag all those guys out. Okay. So he was the one you know, pushing like, everybody? Yeah. They would be terrified. I mean, Brock well, yeah. was doing that too. Yeah. But well, Todd was more a friend's friend. Brock was more like a little bit of an enigma. And then can I, you know, can you kind of get that? Yeah. Whereas Todd was a little more friendly and happy and, and happy go lucky. Okay. So. The boys hung out with him more. And so poor Pat O'Connell, I know that he, Todd made him do some things he didn't want to surf at, you know, but he did it. And then he said, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Well, the but, situation, yeah. the, the, the North Shore is no joke, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would take them out of these giant waves. I mean, my God, don't make them do that. And one time he called me because when he was standing up there and he called me one afternoon, he goes, I just surfed the biggest waves of my life and I'm still high off it. It was 25 feet, which they're calling 50, 60 feet nowadays, which I totally don't agree with, okay. but it was 25 feet and he had surfed Himalayas and he was so totally stoked. And I told him, that's great, but don't ever do that again. I was mad. Yeah. So being a mom and your son going out in big mm -hmm. waves, that had to be yeah. 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 Well, you can't stop him, you know, and I know that he, that was his thing, uh -huh. but still yet, I had to be a little, a little worried, of course, you know, as a mother, of course. And a surfer mother. So you understand the ocean, you understand how powerful. Yeah. yeah I know the be. draw. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course. That's why I can't say don't do that, you know, but I did say <laughs> don't do that. And of course he didn't listen, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. So you guys are just having a great time surfing. Everything's going great. Mm -hmm. So Hawaii, this is your, all of a sudden your life. How does your family back and going way backwards? How's your family? Are they still in Florida? How they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My mom and dad were um, still in Florida and they even moved up to New Jersey where my brother was for a while because, okay. you know, like I say, he was the the brainiac guy and he had a little place for them and stuff but they didn't like it it was new jersey and, you know it's not the same as no you know you can get in a boat in florida and go fishing and yeah. you know what i mean different, my dad was a fisherman and yeah, yeah, yeah it's 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 yeah a lot different but they gave a shot but then they came back and uh lived in new smyrna okay. and edgewater Edgewater, I don't know if you know where that is. It's across the no, but, causeway from okay. New Smyrna Beach. Okay. Yeah, and it was very nice. I mean, like a retirement community where you had to be 55 and over okay. to live there. But And their house their house was amazing. I mean, we never had a huge house. I never knew that we were, I don't want to say poor, but let's just say that we grew up in a three-bedroom house, what they call concrete block stucco in Miami. Okay. And we had one bathroom. And one time my one of my rich girlfriends came over and she goes, Where's your other bathroom? <laughs> and that's when I realized mm. Yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? You have two bathrooms? Oh wow. Can you imagine having to share a family of four in one bathroom? I, well I think people lived more conservatively back then. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I didn't know any different. Yeah. So this whole time, is your family 
pretty supportive of you being in Hawaii? Well, they came to visit and they would always just let me do what I did and make my own mistakes, you know? Yeah. They were just down to earth kind of people, not yeah, not taskmasters like some parents mm -hmm. are. Yeah. I mean, I got spanked a lot when I was a kid. I was a bad girl. They, <laughs> I got my butt beat, beat down with the belt. I mean, come on now. But well, that's how it was back then. They did the best they could. That's all they knew. Yeah. But I still never listen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to change subjects a little bit. What, okay. What kind of boards are you riding today? Right now, my good friend, Stuart Minshew, made me a 6'7". Okay. He made it for me for free, and I gave my friends 100 bucks a glass for me because they were going to do it for free. In fact, they did a former one for free before, and I told them, no, 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 just uh, let me pay you. Yeah. And so they they only wanted 100 bucks, And the sanding came out amazing. The whole glass job is beautiful, and the port is amazing. But it's an EPS, and I never had an EPS before. Okay. And I think I need a little more weight oh, on okay. my boards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need. I'm light. I weigh 105 pounds, so wow. I think I need a little more glide to get in the waves. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But I'm not gonna get a freaking longboard. No, thank you. How much are you surfing these days? Well, I usually go five days a week. Wow, that's impressive. I surf early in the mornings because I can't go my skin. I have so much skin cancer stuff going on. So I go yeah. to Dawn Patrol super early in the morning. Sometimes I get there in the dark and a couple of my friends are already paddling out. And I tell them, don't go out in the dark. You crazy. Okay. So I wait till it gets wide enough for me to see. And then I go out and I usually surf my secret spot. All I'm on a bowl. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shitty place. So bad. Uh, and uh, yeah, but lately I hurt my back a few months ago. So I, I, I'm having a hard time. That's why I needed a heavier board too. But the boys that are out there, they'll push me and I can catch the wave really good. Oh, and I can, so cool. you know, I can, I can still surf. I just can't get in the wave quick enough, you know? So they give me a boost and I like getting the boost. I, I like being pushed by the boys anyway. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's good. And they're so sweet. And a couple of them will chase me down. They'll see that I'm paddling and a couple of them will chase me down to give me the push. And I'm like, Oh, oh thank that's you. awesome. Yeah. It's so sweet. But a couple of times I can catch it on my own, but my back is just, I've never ever had back problems before in my whole entire life. Everybody younger than me tells me, Oh, I got back. What are you talking about? And now <laughs> I know what they're talking about. It's finally, all of a sudden, boom, it's caught up to me. Well, you know, we're not getting younger, and, and, and to get in the water is very important, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even when I couldn't, you know, when I really hurt my back and I couldn't even stand up at all, I would go for a paddle. I could carry my board and I could paddle, you know, but yes. I just couldn't. I would ride the white water sometimes. And even when I, when I was injured, I mean, that is fun. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I, it. Yeah. Do you have any other hobbies besides surfing? Um, your art, Well, obviously. I actually, yeah, my art and my, I make jewelry and I'm always inventing, not inventing, but creating things. And I also teach Zumba. I've, I've oh. taught Zumba for 13 years and I've nice. been doing Zumba for 15 years. I volunteer teach a Zumba class for seniors that are 16 over. Oh, okay. I love doing it because I love dancing. I miss going out you know, dancing in the bars, you know, but this way I can wear sensible shoes mm. and I can pick whatever music I want. And I do Bruno Mars, Michael Jackson. I do Latin stuff on all types of different music. And, and I just love it. it. I do that once a week. Cool. Yeah. So you mentioned dancing and going out and dancing. So was that what you mm -hmm. did back in the day? Did you do a lot of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. Were you a good dancer? But, oh, hell yeah. Come on now. <laughs> oh, I can envision that now. It sounds, oh, yes, you sound like you're okay. a hoot. I am a hoot. Come yes. On. No, of but, <laughs> but it was funny because when my son passed away and I was lost, you know, like just get, yeah, out of it for, for, for a long time, I have to mention. 
that Kelly was there for me. Yeah. Conan was there for me. Benji was there for me. Pat O'Connell was there for me. Raquel from the Hill House was there for me. And my best friend became Diane um, because Rel passed away the next year. Yeah. So Benji took me to Tavarua. I had been to Tavarua in 1988. That was my first and only trip that I'd been to. Mm -hmm. I went with the locomotion people. And then Benji took me in 1998. Yeah. it was a lifesaver to me, even though, you know, I could surf and we surfed together and it, oh my gosh, it was so much fun and I could handle and it was, I rode one of Todd's boards. I think it was a 6'2". I wow. took one of his boards down there and um, yeah, and you know, I was a little, still a little bit out of it and I would crawl underneath a tree in the shade sometimes and not want to talk to people. You know, but yeah, that's understandable. Being in, yeah, being in Tavaroa, the, where the people are the happiest people on earth, the Fijians, mm-hmm. and they're you can hear them laughing in the distance. You know, like the 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 Fijians, they're just the best people in the world, and that that helped me. And I made friends with with the owners, with John Roseman, yeah, and Rick Isbell, and they let me come back. I I went there twelve times from nice. from nine ninety. Eight. Uh, I got to go a bunch of times. I went with Fred Pitaccio one time. I went with Conan one time. I went down when Kelly was seeing Pamela. He he called me and said, hey, we're going down to Tavarua. Why don't you come down? And I'm like, okay. Okay, there you go. I was like, yeah, I'm the, I was there. I could do it because I had I couldn't work. I could. My mind couldn't, you know what I mean? So I was kind of free mentally and, and physically. And so I would just go. Yeah, and it, it was awesome. And then I even got to stay through a couple trips. You know, like usually they have a group of people for one week, and then another group for the next week. Yeah, and they let me stay through two trips. You nice. know what I mean? Yeah, that's oh that's my wonderful. gosh, it changed my whole attitude, my whole uh, well being, and everything. So I can be so forever good. grateful yeah. for all of that. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. You have a lot of friends. You've made a lot of friends in these years. That's so cool. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They that's... take care of me. <laughs> well, obviously your energy you give off is powerful and people want to be around you and they like to talk to you. That's what it seems like for me talking to you. Well, I'll let them talk to me for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I love, I, you know, the friends that I do have, I absolutely adore them, you know, they yeah, and there are some bad apples out there, that, but yeah. you know, I just I love my people. My people are, are so good to me, and yeah. even some of Todd's classmates that he went to high school with, we still keep in touch. And they invited me to their high school reunion. Wow, two years ago. Nice. I know yeah, that's <laughs> kind of cool. I know it's they're just so sweet. I just I mean because they loved Todd. Todd was uh, one of a kind too. Yeah. So it sounds like he was an awesome guy for sure. Yeah, he was. One thing I do want to talk to you about, and I don't know if they give this award out anymore, but for years they were given out during the Vulcan contest, the pipe pro, mm-hmm. they were mm-hmm. giving out the hard yeah. charger award. Yeah. How did that, yes. ha- how did that come in to fruition? Like, I, th- I think it was because it was sponsored by Hawaiian Island creations at first. Okay. It was called the pipeline pro. Yes. And so, I was involved as I think I was judging that too. Mm. Yeah, I was I was a judge and I was there and I you know I knew everybody. I know all the people that put on the contest and everything. Anyway, um, so it was the Hawaiian Island Creations one, and they let me do that, and I did it for gosh a pretty long time up until just a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think the last one that I gave to was um, Jack Robinson. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that was the last time that I, that I did that trophy. I also gave one to Carlos Munoz one time. Mm-hmm. And I always preface it by saying, I, I try to keep it in Hawaii, but these guys are very impressive to me. And Jack is such a great guy. I, I didn't know Carlos, but I liked his surfing, mm-hmm. and he had a good attitude too. 
And it's always got to be somebody that's humble and good attitude. I think I gave one to Seth Moniz. Yeah, year. that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's got to be somebody that's good and, and, you know, good heart and, and good surfing and humble. Yeah, H-U-M-B-L-E. Like yeah, I like the humbleness of it. Right on. You did make the East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame. Yes, I did. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> well, I didn't know what it was all about, really. Right. I really didn't know. And okay. so I talked to a couple of people and what is this like? Is it, what is this? And is it legit? And how come me and all of this? And, and I was, uh, I didn't know that I was supposed to give a speech. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and Kelly, Kelly came oh. because it was, yeah, he came to, because he asked me what day I was going to be there. And I guess he was in Florida at the time. And he said, okay, I'm going to show up. So then of course it became the Kelly show at the thing, you know, uh -huh. but, uh, I didn't care. Gee right. whiz, he came to see me. Yes, and, that's um, cool. Yeah, and so also uh, Seth McKinney was there. That that was another one of Todd's friends that I that I didn't remember to mention. Seth okay. McKinney was one of Todd's good friends. Seth was there because there was a trade show at that time. That that Florida trade show, whatever yes. they call it. Yeah. And um, Pat was there. Yeah, and Janet was there, Todd's previous fiance, mm -hmm. who ended up marrying Pat O'Connell. Yeah, and so they were all there, and some of the people, former people from Locomotion, and now working for Hawaiian Island Creations, and all kinds of different people that, um, you know, that I knew from Hawaii and had known before in Florida. Greg Lore, who I knew from Florida. Wow, he's a big, big wick. Big yes. whip guy over there. Yeah. And uh, it, famous was surfer. it was great. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know what a big deal it was because I was hesitant because I don't like, first of all, I don't like flying unless I'm going to Fiji <laughs> and I don't like having to ha 11 hour flight, you yeah, know, that's what's the way. And so I was, yeah, I was kind of whining about it at first and then people talked me into it. No, you have to go. You have to go. They want you to go. No, no, no. And I didn't know it was such a big deal until I got there. And I was like, holy shit, this is a big deal. Was it fun? It was fun, except when I got up to talk. I mean, I, like I, I said, I didn't know I'm supposed to. These people were giving a speech about their whole life. You know, well, <laughs> and I started there. And I'm just like, oh, thank you so much. I'm so honored. And uh, just keep surfing. And that was pretty. Fun. Yeah, I watched it today, actually. <laughs> it was, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's out there. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I kind of liked I how you did know. it, to be honest with you. Well, well, Seth told me your speech was the best because I, some I of them so. were like, I was, I was almost falling asleep. With some of them, were like, well, when I did this and I did that, me, 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 I'm like, what? Yes. What? So maybe yeah, it was on I accident. Didn't like it. Maybe you, <laughs> what you did was on accident. But I think it says a lot about you know, it says a lot. Just getting up there, and yeah. a few nice words, right. and you're out of there. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could have thanked the Academy, you know, I don't know. Gee whiz. Oh, I don't know great. what they, what they really wanted. I'm but, glad I asked know. you about that. That's great. <laughs> Me too. Cause <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> and I'm sure Jeannie, that there's a lot more that happened in your life. We just got to touch the surface, but thank you so much oh, for yeah. coming on the Quivercast. It was well, a ball. thank you for having me. That was fun. Thank you. I'll meet you in person someday. Well, 100%. Yes. All right, everybody. So this is Mike and Jeannie Chesser, and we are out of here. Thank you, Jeannie. Hello. You go left. I go right. Man, this wave is out of sight. Go surfing. Go surfing. Go and surfing with friends. Ride this wave to the shore. Paddle out them all. Catch ten more. Go surfing. Go surfing. Go and surfing with friends. I don't care if it's wrong or right. I'm gonna do it all day. I'm gonna do it all night. I'm going surfing. I'm going surfing. Go and surfing with friends. Oh!
on my way. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day. I'm going surfing. I'm going surfing. Going surfing with friends. Hey, you guys. Endless Summer box set. This thing is legit. It's authentic. Numbered certificate in it. It has a five-frame film strip. From the original print, you will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.